to the 20th lecture on calculus of variations. In this lecture, we will look at the variational problems with subsidiary conditions. These are also called isoparametric problems. Okay. So, actually what we are doing is, we, we are just looking at the generalizations of variational problems. We have started with this very simple problem, f y x y y dash dx. We have started with the function of this form. Then we move to x, y1, y2, yn, y1 dash, y2 dash, yn dash, dx. And then we move to f, x, y1, y2. I'm sorry. After that, we move to parametric forms of y. Okay. Then this was the first, this was second, this was third, then fourth. We move to functional where higher derivative uh, uh, higher derivatives are involved x y y dash and so on y n dx right and now we are moving to another generalizations uh, another generalization that is very important that those problems are called isoperimetric problems so let us see what those problems are right now we are looking at another generalization of our functional right this is the sequence we are following this was our first starting point then we we reached in the last video here now we we are moving a step ahead right so till now uh, what were our admissible curves till now our admissible curves were such that they had the smoothness requirements for example in this case we want our admissible curves y should have first derivative continuous right and in this case we want our input function y to have an nth derivative continuous so here your y will belong to the space cab and here your y will belong to the space d and a v okay you know this already and plus your admissible curve should satisfy the boundary conditions till now what were, whatever we were doing we had these two conditions these two conditions on our admissible curves but in the parametric problems we will add one extra condition on the admissible curves so we have the set of admissible curves which have every curve has a smoothness requirement every curve has to satisfy the boundary conditions and we are putting an extra condition on the admissible curve and this extra condition is called the subsidiary condition right for example suppose we are asking for a curve y of x for which this functional will have extreme value and the admissible curve should satisfy the boundary condition this moreover the admissible curve should be such that this another functional k of y which is a to b g x y y dash dx takes a value l this is the extra condition this condition can be of any form but if this condition is in the form this extra condition can be of any form of any form but if this uh, this condition is of this form that this functional should take a constant value then such problems are called isoparametric problems and in this particular video we are going to deal with the isoparametric problem is that thing clear that now our admissible curves have this uh, has to set uh, admissible curves have to satisfy the smoothness requirements they have to satisfy the boundary conditions plus they have to satisfy this extra condition right this extra condition where some other functional has to take a uh, fixed value l that is predefined value l okay the such problems are called isoperimetric problems and in this video we will look how to solve these isoperimetric problems just a sentence about these isoperimetric problems actually the originally the idea of isoperimetric problem from where this problem or uh, like uh, uh, was like started it was like we wanted to come uh, find out among all the closed curves of a given length l okay for example we wanted to know suppose you are given a thread of length l okay with this thread of length you can make different shapes right you can make a triangle you can make a square you can make a rectangle a parabola anything you can make and closed curves we are looking at so you can make a square triangle a parallelogram or a uh, circle and so on we wanted to know that among these a, uh, figures which one has the maximum area right so and every figure the length is fixed l so that is why the parameter is fixed okay for each figure the parameter is fixed therefore this term isoparametric was originated so the origin of this term is from this problem because this was the first problem in this uh, area which we had considered we wanted to know among all the closed curves of a given length l 
find the curve in in enclosing the greatest area right this was the uh, first problem in this area that is why this these problems are called isoperimetric problems right okay so and uh, so our problem is that we have to obtain the extrema of this curve this functional right subject to some boundary condition y of a is given y of b is given subject to another condition that is g x y y dash dx should be l right we assume that this f and this capital f and capital g they have continuous first and second order derivatives with in a b with respect to all their arguments this is the simple requirement which we need to have right okay so let us see how to solve these problems So what is our problem? First, uh, we uh, how to solve these problems? We have a theorem, right? This is the theorem which we are going to prove in this video. What is the theorem? It's theorem the, this theorem says that given a functional this, suppose this is a functional given, right? Let the admissible curves satisfy these boundary conditions and this subsidiary condition, right? So basically, this is our isoperimetric problem, right? And next we assume that suppose this uh, suppose I am saying that uh, till now I don't know how to solve but suppose I, I I know how to solve and I obtain this as a extremal okay suppose this is an extreme value this is a, this is the curve which is an extremal of this problem right this is our solution suppose this is our solution then this theorem says that if this solution is not an extremal of this particular functional right obviously we can obtain the extremal of this functional right this is not a, a, a extremal of this functional. It means it does not satisfy the Euler equation g y minus g y by d x of g y dash is equal to zero. Right? That is a necessary condition for this to be an extremal. Okay. Suppose this is not an extremal of k of y. Right? Then if if this is there that this is not an extremal of this particular functional, then there exists a constant lambda. This is what we are going to prove such that y of x is an extremal of this functional right it means that this y of x satisfy this Euler's equation for this functional Euler's equation will be f y the derivative of this thing with respect to y that will be f y minus dy by dx of just a minute derivative of this thing with respect to y that will be f y plus lambda is constant g y minus dy by dx of Derivative of this thing with respect to y dash that will be f y dash plus lambda times g y dash is equal to 0. So I can write it like f y minus g y by dx of f y dash plus lambda. This term and this term lambda will be common lambda times g of y minus g y by dx of g y dash is equal to 0. Right. So basically we are saying that if suppose you say that you find out you have found out the solution. This is extremal which satisfy all these conditions then this is actually this can be actually obtained from this equation right this is what we are going to prove okay so once we have proved this we can always suppose you want to find out the extremal of this functional suppose you want to find out the extremal of this functional with y of a is equal to y naught y of b is equal to y1 and some other y dx is equal to 5 okay Suppose you are you want out you want to find out an extremal of this functional which satisfy these conditions. So clearly this is an isoperimetric problem. So you from this theorem you know that what you have to do you have to make another functional which will be this y dash square plus lambda times this y dx and find out the extremal of this functional. So you have to apply the Euler's equation on this functional and you'll get the extremal which is of your uh, which is the one which set, uh, which is an extremal of this functional which satisfy these conditions right okay so basically we have reduced this condition because we don't know how to deal this condition this extra condition uh, for dealing with this extra condition we are obtaining another functional and we are finding the extremal of that functional such that this this condition is automatically taken care of okay right so now we our aim is to prove this theorem right let us prove this theorem Okay, so uh, we are saying that g of y is having an extremum for this particular curve, y is equal to y of x. 
so obviously if this is uh, this uh, this is an extremal of this functional then it satisfy the boundary conditions these are the boundary condition and this satisfy the subsidiary condition this is the subsidiary condition right okay now uh, our interval is from a to b our j of y is a to b f x y y dash dx so what we are doing is we are obtaining two points x1 and x2 in the interval ab this is our interval ab a b our interval i'm we are choosing x1 and x2 two points right such that x1 is completely arbitrary this this is any point this is any point i can choose and x2 is not completely arbitrary it will satisfy one condition that condition i'll satisfy later okay but for now for for this time you assume that this is completely arbitrary and this is a point which has to satisfy one condition what that condition is we will look what that condition is we will come to know right so and suppose now you have chosen two points x1 and x2 where x1 is completely arbitrary and x2 is not completely ar arbitrary after choosing these two points x1 and x2 you give you have you have this this as your extremal you give you have this y of y of x is equal to extremal as your extremal give this function this function an increment delta 1y plus delta 2y okay give y x an increment of this delta 1y plus delta 2y such that this delta 1y is non zero only in the neighborhood of x1 and this delta 2y is non zero only in the neighborhood of x2 right so we have something like this this was your y suppose this is your y this is your point x1 and x2 okay then your y increment this will be something like this so this is your y plus delta 1y plus delta 2y okay this is what we have done right Our aim is to prove that theorem, so we are just doing all the necessary things which are required, right? Now this is something we I am recalling from video five. In video five, we have done this variational derivatives. Okay, what was that? If you have forgot, we can just have, uh, we can recall it, right? What is variational derivative? Suppose this j of y is a functional, right? Then you give an increment y of uh, h x to y x. Okay, give an increment h x to y x such that h x is non-zero only in the neighborhood of x naught. Right? There is a point. Suppose you have this functional as f x y y dash d x a to b. Right? Suppose this is your functional. Right? In the interval a to b, you have the point x naught, and you this is your uh, function y y of x, and then you give it in an increment h of x such that that h of x is non-zero only in the neighborhood of x naught. Okay? so your increment will be increment in functional will be j of y plus h minus j of y and call this area area between hx and x axis so your hx will be something like non zero only in the neighborhood of x not right this is your x axis this is your y axis this area call this area as sigma delta sigma this is the area between hx and x axis right now divide this increment in your functional by this area you will get J of y plus h minus J of y divided by delta sigma. Okay. Now let delta sigma go to zero. Now let this area go to zero. This area. Let this area go to zero in such a manner that this maximum of this thing, that maximum of h x is also going to zero. That this area should go to zero in such a way that it it is shrinking both from this side and this side. Okay. So your area should be going to zero in such a way that both maximum of h x and the length of the interval in which h x is non vanishing is going to zero right so basically we are making this area going to zero in such a way that it is contracting this way as well as this way right if after doing so this thing this thing may or may not converge to a limit if when delta sigma going to zero this thing goes to some limit that limit is called variational derivative of j At x not, okay, for the curve y is equal to y of x, and that is noted by delta j by delta y at x is equal to x not. Okay, that is the definition of variational derivative. You can go to video five if you want to understand it more. Okay, so you have what is the definition? You have this definition. Limit delta sigma goes to zero. J of y plus h minus j of y divided by delta sigma is equal to delta j by delta y at x is equal to x not. This is called variational derivative of j. Clearly, I can write it like this. If this is equal to this, it means that this thing is equal to 
this variational derivative sum plus some constant epsilon where epsilon goes to zero as delta sigma goes to zero and I can take delta sigma that side so I have this definition of increment in the functional right where epsilon goes to zero and delta sigma goes to zero also recall from uh, video 5 that actually variational derivative is nothing but the left hand side of Euler's equation we have proved in that video that delta j by delta x that is the variational derivative of our functional is equal to the left hand side of the Euler's equation this was just like we, we have recalled from video 5 now come uh, uh, come back to what we were doing what we were doing is uh, we, we were doing was like I have uh, given an increment hx is equal to this okay where this is non-zero at x1 in a neighborhood of x1 and this is non-zero in a neighborhood of x2 right now we have seen that if if we are giving hx as increment which is non-zero only in the neighborhood of x0 then the increment in the functional can be written in this form right now we are giving an increment which is non-zero at the neighborhoods of two points so our increment will be of the form just i am following this okay will be del j by del y at this is a variational derivative of j with respect to y at the point x1 plus epsilon times delta sigma 1 delta sigma 1 was the area between this delta y1 uh, and x axis so delta sigma 1 is this right because here this delta sigma is the area between hx and x axis so this is a to b hx dx plus because we have the increment which is non-zero at two points so we have the another term we have another term which is the uh, variational derivative of j with respect to y at the point x is equal to x2 plus epsilon 2 delta sigma 2 delta sigma 2 is the area between delta y2 and x axis so this is your delta uh, y2 uh, sorry delta sigma 2 and this epsilon 1 goes to 0 when delta sigma 1 goes to 0 and epsilon 2 goes to 0 when delta sigma 2 goes to 0 right so this is what we got this is the increment we have obtained right okay so now what we want also we want we have this uh, y of x then we have this y of y star x which is your y plus delta y1 plus delta y2 these are both are admissible curves okay so we it, it means that both should satisfy the subsidiary condition so subsidiary condition was that k of y that was a to b g of x y y dash should be l so we want k of y is equal to l and k of y star is equal to l okay Shit. 